Fish on. Fish on. Fish on. Oh, PB, PB. Guys, I got it. Woohoo! Bro, 55. Get that beast. Catch and release, release the catch! <laughs>Three weeks I haven't I haven't uploaded any videos in like three weeks I haven't fished in three weeks I'm here at Pandan today well for obvious reasons you know with the whole otter incident and all that nonsense going on at least for me it's kind of dangerous to fish anywhere else and closest place being Pandan so the last time I came to Pandan, I was uh, I was working micro grubs. Uh, at least the last few times I came here. So uh, no reason to start with something else. You know, the season could have probably could have possibly changed. It might not be micro grub season anymore. You know, because monsoon season's coming to an end. But it worked the last time, so that's what I'm going to start off with today. And if it doesn't work out, then I'll switch to something like hard bodies or uh, crankbaits or divers. Well, you know, the usual affair. But I already got a tap on this grub, so I'll give it a shot first. a soon hawk oh. Oh, first fish of the day my soon hawk is a rare catch So you remember how I was talking about in uh, I think the previous video uh, about how you sh you should you can try touching the blank of the rod with your index finger on a spin setup to get more sensitivity. Well, this is kind of the BC version. You touch the line, and that gives you. There's nothing that can give you more sensitivity than actually touching the line. So oh oh, it's a huge wake over there and of course when it's important for me to get the lure back stuck. there's so much surface activity right now it's not even funny I'm about to throw switch to a hard body just to explore what's going on around the sides What I've got here is a little, it's a, I think it's a Jackal Keyburn Vibe. It's a vibe with crazy vibration action. Like it's got one of the strongest vibrations I've ever felt on a, on a silent vibe. 
so the way you want to work most vibes is obviously you straight crank it but then you've got to give it a twitch here and there just kind of give it a little um, variation in the action because quite often the fish will hit when just when you do that when it does when the lure does something different just when it ticks differently from it, it normally swims that's when you're gonna get a bite so you're just gonna do a constant crank and then you're gonna jerk it really quickly a couple of times and then you're gonna resume the constant crank and then you, and obviously if you're doing this along pandan you want to make sure you keep your rod tip up you don't want that vibe diving into anything So as you cast the vibe further out, you want to give it a couple of seconds to sink and give it a quick twitch to get the action right, to get the position of the vibe right. And then you slow crank it, not ultra slow, just moderate slow. And then you twitch it a couple of times. And then you twitch it, oh, oh, that was a hit. That was a hit, damn, it hit just as I twitched it. Pulled that lure right out of the fish's mouth. So another important thing to note is when you do do the twitch, don't stop winding. It's that pause in the winding that will get you stuck every single time. Because you got to remember when you're twitching the lure, the line... Oh, there we go. Ah, damn. Right, that might have been a nesting PB. I just want to investigate that area just to see if there's a chance that it is nesting. If it was a nesting PB, it's gonna come back to the same spot. Got him. that jackal vibe all right one last look second fish of the day definitely a nesting pb Oh man, that lure came right back at me. There was another fish there. Damn, I'm getting bites all over the place. What is going on here? Got one. 
Fisch an. What is this? It's not fighting like a PB, it's black. It's not fighting like an OP. Maybe it is a PB. Oh, it is a PB. Okay. Oh God, I got him in the eye. Get it out of your eye. Okay, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a quick release. I've got it in the eye. Uh, look at that. Second PB of the day. And a quick release. Alright, so me, before it gets too dark, I'm going to have to end the video soon. So just let me talk real quick about, about how you spot a pattern and how you kind of rationalize and justify why a pattern is working. So I did get a Sunhawk um, on a micro rubber, but that, that's not a PB. There's no indication of the feeding habits of the PB in here. Now, I did get two PBs on a metal vibe that looks like that essentially looks like a PB. Okay, now what this tells me, and I caught and I hit them along the bank. And the first one, I hit once, he, he got off, and I hit the exact same fish again at the exact same spot. Now this gives me a pretty strong indication that um, there might, oh, there we go, one more. There might be a spawning scenario. Oh, it's definitely a spawning scenario. They're all tight to the bank. They're tight to the bank and and they're hitting vibes that look like PB, smaller PBs. So, so guys, that's how you kind of rationalize and, and form a pattern or spot a pattern, if there is any. You know, don't just um, hit a fish on a lure and say, oh, okay, because that lure was working today. Kind of try to understand and rationalize the reason behind why that lure is, is working. And you'll do a lot better in general because if you figure out the reason why a particular lure works, you can now understand or you can now get creative, you know, and, and use lures that fit into that entire category rather than just limit yourself to just the lure that works. All right, PB number three. Wow, this is turning out to be a good day. So yeah, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this vibe. This is the, I think it's, let's see, it's the, it's the Jackal, Jackal Keyburn. It's a, it's a blade vibe. It's essentially metal with a plastic blade. It's, it's a blade vibe. And uh, that action is insane. I've never used a vibe that swims that violently and vibrates that violently before. I um, mean, it's, it's gonna be tough for me to show you the action considering how dark it is, but uh, that thing, that thing really, it just wiggles and wiggles and the vibrations it puts out is, if there are spawning fish along the bank, that is not a single fish that will be able to resist biting this thing because this is gonna come in with all that vibration and just storm right through that nesting grounds and all the PB are just gonna, then that are nesting in that area are just gonna get really worked up. And they're gonna just key in on that vibe and smash it. Ah, oh, damn. I just set the hook into a rock. All right, anyway, I, I think I'm just gonna end the video here. I, I'm not gonna stop fishing, of course, but uh, losing light really fast. So I don't wanna be doing my, my closing in complete darkness. So anyway, yeah, so it's been three weeks. Uh, it's pr really, really good session after three weeks of not fishing. Um, you know, I, I had kind of gone into like a semi-depression mode 
you know, because I can't, I couldn't fish because I was so busy. And then I'm reading all this otter stuff and then how the PUB has gone nuts. The public's gone nuts. And it was kind of, I was, I was really down about it, feeling really down about it. So this was a much needed good session to kind of put my mind at ease and scratch that itch, of course. So if you guys uh, like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. Share my videos with your friends if you learned something and oh, hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video very soon. I'm still really busy with work. Alright, tight lines guys. Take care. Yeah, so whilst I'm fishing here, you know, I think I'm going to be doing quite a bit of talking. Well, I'm not really in the mood to talk today, but I think, I think there, there's stuff we need to talk about, we need to discuss and, you know, such as, uh, oh, you know what? Yeah, let me, let me take care of this snack before I start talking. So the, the current situation with local fishing is pretty bad ever since that stupid otter incident which once again as with all otter incidents is was taken completely out of context uh, this time not by um, social media platform like stomp this time by the actual otter watch itself also i've come to call the peta of singapore now when i when i when i refer to something as peta or petaresque uh, it's not necessarily in reference to them being, in, uh, you know, uh, environmentalists or caring for animals or all that, but it's, it's more in reference to some of the stupid shit that PETA does. Um, the stuff that, stupid stuff that they say. I mean, don't get me wrong. I fully support the cause that they are behind, you know, uh, being environmentally friendly, being uh, kind to animals, conservation and all of that, but... Some of the shit they say is just plain stupid. They don't do. They don't seem to do their research. They take things out of context. And I mean, if you watch any of the recent videos that Peta posts about any given topic, you get what I mean. The intention is right. It's just that the delivery is all wrong. You know, and that's pretty much what the Auto Watch did. They took things completely out of context. They didn't do their research. Any angler knows just by looking at that picture that that's a hook that you would never see on a lure. And not that I'm, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not blaming uh, baiters, I'm not pointing fingers, I'm just saying that it was a baiting hook and the pictures that they posted and crucified, the anglers that they crucified were um, Frankly, they were Leoras. I mean, sure, they were fishing illegally, but they were Leoras. You know, and, and, and seeing an otter being hooked by a, baited, a, bait, a baiting hook is also very telling, you know, as to where the otter possibly got hooked. You know, if, if you guys notice, most baiters, they, they bait in legal grounds because, well, that's where they can get away with it. You know, it's, you think luring illegally is risky? You know, try baiting illegally. It's even more risky. So you can pretty much safely say that that otter was hooked in a legal ground by a baiter or the otter just simply came across a, a, a baiting rig that happened to be stuck somewhere and got hooked by it. The point here is they crucified the wrong group of people for doing the wrong thing. Not to mention the location, you know, showing anglers fishing at Flyer when it's pretty clear that the otter was hooked somewhere else other than Flyer. You know, and, and of course in, in standard Singapore fashion, when you read the comments, damn. Common sense apparently isn't common, even in a, in a, in a group such as Otter Watch with such good intentions.